Hello, this is Patrick at 1CNC West, and what we're going to do in this training video is apply a facing operation to our very first project. Now you can see I already have the part loaded and the datums in the proper location. So let's start to apply our toolpath. We're going to head over here to the main toolbar. We're going to come down here to the CAM category and select Stock Toolpaths. These are your two and a half axis machining operations. So we're going to just left click on that. And from there, we're going to grab the facing operation. So I'm just going to left click on that. As soon as we do that, our cursor changes to the word bound. That means it's looking for us to digitize a closed boundary. You can digitize anywhere you want on here. I'm just going to left hand mouse click. Once we do that, the geometry turns red and then we can right hand mouse click to finish that. Now, after we do that, we get our very first dialog box. This is where we define a tool. Now, you can define a tool manually, or you can pull a tool from the tool library. In this example, though, we're going to demonstrate how to define a tool manually. So let's let's hop down here, and here you can see we have our tool type. If you left click on this, you can see these are the different types of tools that you can use for this. I'm going to grab a face end mill. Then you have the length. This is how far the tool sticks out past the holder. I have it set to 25 millimeters, but you can see if I change it to 50 as soon as I do that the graphics automatically update. I already have my diameter in here so that looks good. This is your turret position. I'm going to say this is turret position number one. This is your RPM here. I'm going to put in 2300 for that and then of course you can select coolant if you'd like. I'm not going to worry about work offset right now. Here's your feed rate. Now you have two different feed rates. You have an XY feed rate. That's what the feed rate is here. Then you have a plunge feed rate. This plunge feed rate excuse me, is any time the tool moves down in Z or feeds in Z. All right, so this looks good. You've got two feed rates, X, Y, and Z feed rate. I already have those put in, so we'll click Next on there. This is your clearances dialog box. This is where you set up your clearance values. So we have our rapid plane. This is how we can approach and, and exit the, the uh, operation. I already have this set to 10 millimeters. The plunge clearance, that's where the tool is going to start to feed down. And you can see this is all laid out very nicely here. Alright, so this is where it's going to feed down, and then the top of the material I have set to Z0. And the final Z, this is where we're going to make our cut, I have that set to 0 as well. Uh, if you want to, you can take rough passes, I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to leave that alone. We're just going to take that at one, at one uh, cut increment, just right at Z0. Okay, so let's take a look at these facing parameters first. I'm going to move this dialog box out of the way just a little bit. All right, this thing here called approach distance, this is where the tool is going to wrap it down, or excuse me, feed down uh, away from the part. It's the distance outside the boundary. This just ensures that the tool does not feed down right on top of the part. And by default, it's set to 110% 110 of the tool radius. Now the overlap amount, when your tool starts to uh, feed across here, the overlap amount is just how far that tool is going to overlap itself over the boundary. And you can see by default that's set to 50% of the tool radius. Then you have a toolpath angle. A zero is going to be a horizontal toolpath, but you can put in whatever angle you want. 90 would be vertical. You could type in 45 or any angle that you'd like. I'm going to leave that set to zero. Now you have your tool step over amount. That's the distance between each one of these passes. And by default, it's set to 75% of the tool diameter. I'm going to change that to 65. Notice as I do that, down here, you get the decimal equivalent uh, of that. Uh, if you want to type in a, a, a value for your step over, you can always uncheck this. And you can type in whatever value you want. So there's 20 millimeters for that. But I'm going to go back to auto step over and 65% of the tool diameter. Now you have three different uh, styles of facing. You have spiral, and that's obviously a spiral toolpath. You have zigzag, that's going to be uh, cutting back and forth. And then you have one direction. This, is, this would be the one to use if you want a, a really nice or the best finish would be one direction. Uh, also note too that the toolpath angle is appropriate and it gets applied to zigzag in one direction. This does not... Uh, uh, is not intended for the spiral. Okay, let's go with... Uh, let's go with... Let's go with zigzag on this. That looks good. And so there's the toolpath. You can see there is our very first machining operation. And if I move this down just a little bit here, you can see it's stored over here within the NC manager. So there we go. There is our first machining operation applied to our very first project. Thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.